Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can mix an electric guitar using the Waves Signature Series plugins. If you're not familiar with these plugins, the idea was that Waves collaborated with some big name audio mixing engineers to create some simple, easy to use plugins that are based on the signal chains that these engineers use when they're mixing different kinds of instruments. I think that these plugins have a number of good things to offer for different people. First, if you're not very experienced with mixing, Maybe you're a little bit intimidated by a lot of different kinds of parameters and things that you need to know for a compressor or an equalizer. These plugins strip away all those different kinds of parameters, make it really easy uh, to get a decent sound for different kinds of instruments. Second, if you're an experienced mixer, maybe you don't have a lot of time, these plugins uh, don't take a lot of work. You just insert them on your track and immediately your, uh, your signal should sound better. I'm going to be showing you the plugins that are supposed to be used specifically with electric guitar. So each one of these bundles comes with different kinds of plugins that are supposed to be used with drums, electric guitar, bass, vocals. So if you have the, the bundles, you know, you could experiment and insert one of the different kinds of things like the vocals plugin on your electric guitars, things like that. But I'm going to stick to the conventional ways that Waves uh, recommends and these uh, engineers recommend uh, for mixing different kinds of instruments and today I'm talking about the electric guitar. Along the way hopefully this video will give you an opportunity to compare side by side each one of the plugins. So I'm going to be showing you the Chris Lord Algae, the Eddie Kramer, Jack Joseph Puig, and Tony Maserati plugins. So hopefully you'll get to hear how do they sound, how is each one different, and uh, what are the features and parameters that each one of these offers so you can uh, shape the sound a little bit different. So let's get started. I'm going to be showing you uh, these plugins in the context of a mix. So this is just a kind of a standard pop rock song. has some uh, specifically rhythm electric guitars that I'm going to be uh, mixing today. But then it also has bass guitar, lead guitar, acoustic guitars, and some drums and uh, percussion. I've already got uh, most of the other instruments mixed that I'm not going to be focusing on. Uh, but here I have the two rhythm guitar tracks that I'm going to be uh, demonstrating today. One is uh, a model of a sh uh, Fender Stratocaster playing through a Marshall Plexi. The other one is a Gibson Les Paul playing through a model of a Vox AC30. I'm going to play you back uh, the track so you can hear uh, how it sounds and uh, listen for the rhythm guitars. One's panned to the left and one's panned to the right. Here we go. Let me uh, solo the guitars so you can just hear how the rhythm guitars sound with no processing on them. This is just the guitar and the amplifier. <laughs> Alright, so in my mix, I have uh, one of the guitars panned to the left and one of them panned to the right. Now, just so you know, these plugins that I've inserted, originally uh, the tracks were just mono tracks, but when you insert the plugins, they all convert the track into a stereo signal. So that's why I have it panned the way I do and why you see um, that the output is a stereo track. While I'm mixing it, uh, I'm just going to use the uh, Strat for right now. And I'll go through each of the plugins and show you the controls and how they sound. Um, and so I'm going to pan it out so you can hear it uh, across the full uh, stereo mix. Um, let's get started. So the first one I have inserted, I have them just in alphabetical order, is the Chris Lord Algae Guitars plugin. Let me give you some idea about how these plugins work. So each of them kind of have a input sensitivity or an input fader. Uh, control and what that does is uh, you use that to uh, 
kind of change the volume of the signal that's coming into the plugin. All of them also have an output uh, fader, and that's how you control the volume that's leaving the plugin. Then they have some other different kinds of controls um, in here, uh, but I'll talk about those in a second and show you each of them what they do. So the idea why you have an input uh, fader is uh, for some of these kind of dynamics processing, like a compressor, um, what you want to do is uh, be hitting the compressor uh, at a specific volume. So there are things in a compressor in a comp compressor that's like a threshold, and uh, the engineers have set it up. The the mixing engineers have set it up based on they want the compressor to be acting a specific way based on the level of the input signal. So what you want to do is get the input signal to be not too hot or not too loud and not too quiet. And how you do that is you watch this uh, meter right here. And uh, when it's kind of green, that's a little bit too quiet. When it's red, that's a little bit too loud. You know, that's not to say uh, that you can experiment with different things, uh, experiment with the, changing the input fader and the output fader, and kind of have that change how the dynamics processing reacts within the plugin. Um, but for the most part, uh, just getting started, hitting it right about the orange, the yellow and orange color is uh, what you'll be looking for. All right. Inside of this plugin, there are a couple different settings uh, up here. Um, they are for different kinds of uh, processing, um, and they're specifically for supposedly different kinds of uh, guitar sounds. So there's one, you know, if your guitar sound is clean, one maybe a little bit more. Uh, has a little bit more drive to it, so a crunch setting, a heavy setting, and a bypass setting. Now, um, th there's a reamplifier control over here also. I'm not going to be using that, and basically what it does is it imposes uh, an amp simulator sound on your uh, guitar signal. Now, I've already got a guitar. Uh, the signal I've recorded is a guitar with an amplifier, so I'm not going to be using that. I'll show you how, by changing this one, clean, crunch, heavy, and bypass, what it does is it sort of... Uh, Changes like the equalization, um, maybe just some, maybe some different frequencies are boosted or are being cut um, by selecting these different things, um, and you know things like maybe the compressor acts a little bit different um, based on the different uh, clean, crunch, and heavy. Um, next, uh, there are these faders over here that I'm going to show you. Uh, each of these is. Uh, has a unique uh, feature to it. So you have things that are kind of like an equalizer. So you have your bass and your treble, but you don't have to worry about different frequencies. Um, you just have to worry about, you know, turning it up, turning it down. Oh, do I like that? Do I not like that? Okay, that's pretty simple. Um, but you do have the option of clicking different uh, ranges. So you have like a sub range that's like really low, then a lower one that's kind of uh, mid lower and upper, obviously. Those names uh, describe that. Same with um, the treble here. You have bite, top, and roof. So those are different uh, frequency ranges that are going to be boost or cut. And you'll be able to hear those in a second. Next is a compressor. And there's three different kinds of com uh, compression that are in here. Kind of like a limiter. That's the wall. Uh, spank one and push. Uh, they each sound a little bit different. Um, and then you can even control how much the compression uh, is going on. More compression or less compression uh, with the fader. Uh, so that's cool. Um, you know, e even though these uh, plugins don't have a lot of controls uh, to them, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the nice thing is they built in a lot of different sounds that you can get. So they're they're all pretty flexible, even though um, the interface is pretty simple that you don't have to worry about a lot of those different kinds of things. Next is the reverb. Uh, and this reverb kind of uh, is a channel that's in parallel, so you always hear the dry signal, but then you also have the reverb going separate from it. And there's three different kinds, and they kind of uh, change. You got club, a uh, hall, and arena. So the arena one is like a long reverb, hall is a little bit shorter, and then club is a more focused reverb sound. Uh, you can turn this one off. Um, same with all of them. Basically, if you select them like this, it bypasses the compressor or the equalizer, things like that. And then uh, same with the reverb. Next is the delay. Uh, and this is another one that kind of goes in uh, parallel to the dry signal. 
Um, so you can bring up the delay, bring down the, the delay, and it doesn't really change the volume of the uh, dry signal that's going through. Uh, you have these are different lengths of uh, delay. So uh, the delay syncs to your uh, DAW host. So I'm running Pro Tools right now. And um, based on the tempo of your song, if you set it, um, the delay will change and make sure that it's eighth notes of your song or um, this is a dotted eighth note. Uh, the edge, I guess he's, he's, uh, cause that's the, the edge kind of sound, uh, from U2. Then you have quarter notes. Uh, the last one over here is a pitch control. This kind of does like stereo widening, uh, and things like that. And I'll, I'll show that to you, uh, as well in a second. So let me start playing it back. What I'll do is just, this is the default setting. Uh, when you call it up, I'll bypass it and then kick it in, and you can hear just immediately when you pull up this plugin, it changes the sound. There's a lot of stuff going on right there. You know, you, you should definitely be able to hear that it's, if you're wearing headphones, that the, the guitar is, is wider now. You can hear it kind of in both ears better, um, separate. You can hear some delay going on, some reverb. Um, you know, there's some sort of equalization going on to clean up the signal. Um, and what's cool about these pl th this plugin is, you know, if you were to do all this sorts of stuff, equalizers, compressors, reverbs, delays, you know, if you were going to do that with um, just conventional plugins, you'd have to use up a bunch of different slots in Pro Tools, insert slots, and maybe have uh, different auxiliary channels running delays and reverbs and stuff like that. But just using this single plugin, you've got all that stuff right in front of you that you can play around with um, and experiment with until you get the right sound. So let me take you first through the clean, crunch, and heavy, and bypass. Here's clean. Now these settings, they're uh, more obvious when you uh, are using the the amp simulator side of things, but they still do uh, some subtle things even when you're not using uh, that control. What I'm going to do so you can focus uh, more on the uh, uh, sound of what each of these are doing is I'm going to turn off the reverb and the delays and the pitch to begin with and uh, show you the different uh, the equalizer uh, settings and then also the compressor. So let me turn this off too. You can hear the equalizer. The guitar sound I'm using is kind of crunchy to begin with. It's not that heavy, it's not that clean, so probably this is the most appropriate one to use. Next, this is a, a higher frequency. Just doing a darker sound, you can bring down that frequency. Alright, let me talk about the compressor compressor now. 
So the compressor, you know, is a dynamics processor, but it's also being used just to shape the overall sound. You can hear just when I take it out, what it does. So I like that one. You know, some of the uh, some of the compressors that Waves are uh, known for modeling and probably that are going on behind the scenes here um, are not only just uh, simple dynamics processors, but they're also known for shaping and kind of adding some analog color to a signal. So I imagine that that's that's what's going on. Uh, the kind of code, uh, the processing. Uh, code, computer code that they're using for the plugins is doing some things to kind of add some analog color and, and uh, saturation more than just uh, doing some kind of uh, controlling the dynamics. So next, let me show you the reverb here. I'll exaggerate it so you can get a better idea. delay. kind of exaggerating the delay more than you would typically do for a uh, rhythm guitar um, but just so you could hear the different sounds how it went from more of a faster delay to a little bit slower and then slower uh, even further still um, hopefully that gave you an idea maybe you know about might be more useful for a uh, uh, lead guitar but you know you might want to blend in just a little bit on your rhythm guitar maybe blend it in more subtly to kind of fill out the sound uh, lastly, let me show you the pitch plugins and uh, start with the stereo one. I'll bring it down at the bottom so you're, this is the minimum that you can have. See what happens when you fade it in. Tightens up, it's wider. That's more, even adding some more modulation in there to picking it up. It's kind of like a flanger effect versus the chorus. Now I know uh, in my song, when I'm mixing it, I know that I don't really want it to have any uh, kind of stereo sound to it uh, so I'm going to take that out uh, and I'm going to come back here to the hall I, I thought that that one sounded pretty good all right so that's uh, the guitar sound I'm going to stick with uh, for here on my plexi uh, the strat let me switch over and I'm just gonna, rather than going through the whole thing on the uh, Les Paul, just find some settings that I like on it. And I'll save this for later on when I'm gonna be comparing them all side by side.
So that's cool. I'm going to move on to the Eddie Kramer now, and we'll come back and I'll play them all side by side so you can hear, you know, how I kind of like them uh, uh, one after the other. Get them in the settings that I think sound good for that plugin. So this is the Eddie Kramer one. Uh, let me make sure I've got the right one uh, going. Here's the Plexi again. And uh, I'll bypass it just with the default settings so you can hear what the plugin does. So this one's a little bit more subtle. Um, what I hear uh, right away is that this one's adding, you know, some nice things to the mid-range to kind of bring out the sound of the electric guitar. Um, again, there's some similar sort of uh, settings, but it just, you know, looks a little bit different. You have your input sensitivity that you want to look for in the yellow-orange. You have your output control. You have a compressor. You have the different kinds of uh, EQ that you can use. And you have this uh, effects uh, thing again, kind of this parallel thing when you have your uh, reverb, your delays, delay mix on this one, and this one's the delay time. Uh, so before in the other one, you had those three settings quarter note, edge, and uh, eighth note. And this one, you can control it yourself. So I'll play around with that and show you um, what I like about it and uh, let you hear the different kinds of compressors uh, that they have. Um, or the, I guess the single compressor in each one of these settings. So there's a Rhythm Guitar 1, Rhythm Guitar 2, which uh, is a little bit different. And then there's a Lead Guitar. The Lead Guitar, it gives you the opportunity to use some more of these. Uh, so this one's like the Flanger and stuff like that. So I'll play around with that, let you hear each of it. Um, I'll start out here, Rhythm Guitar 1, and then uh, turn down the compressor and bring it up, and you can hear how they sound and then show you the different... Um, I'll bring these down too so you don't have the effects, and then I'll bring up the effects later on. So here's the compressor. Now the EQ. more control over the bass. This one you have more control over the mid. Of course the output fader. Alright, now let's talk about the reverb. Longer delay time. Rhythm guitar two, which is going to be just a little bit different. That's very dramatic. This is for lead guitar, not necessarily for rhythm, but. Go back and find uh, some settings that I liked. Uh, I think I liked a little bit more mid range.
All right, cool. Uh, so let me show you, let me set up the uh, one for the Les Paul now quickly. So I'll come back to those uh, later on. Let me uh, now show you the JJP guitars. Similar sort of thing, just a different uh, interface. You have your input sensitivity here, your output uh, main output fader right here to control the master of them. Then you have your uh, basic EQs, uh, low and high, uh, and you have your compressor. Then uh, what's a little bit different about his is uh, you have all these different kinds of uh, kind of like parallel channels. So you have your parallel channel for your reverb, um, but what you also have are these uh, different ones to kind of blend in um, different sounds. So this is the edge one is kind of more of a uh, saturated kind of distortion sound that you're blending in with it. Then you uh, blend in kind of like, it's almost like an equalizer, but you know it's a parallel thing going on where you can turn it on and off and... Uh, do things, but this one's kind of it's uh the way he has the, them described is supposed to be, supposed to be more intuitive. So if you are just listening to your mix and you think you know my mix sounds like it could use some warmth to it, then you would look for the warm uh, fader and bring it up. Or you say you know what I think my guitar sound it just needs some more sustain. You would bring that up obviously, uh, or attack. You know that's more of like that initial transient of your. Uh, of the guitar sound. So I'll show you those and you can hear the different ones. He also has these different settings, clean, rock, R&B, and chug for probably heavier sounds. Um, so I'll go through each of these uh, and show you a bypass and then what happens when you kick it in. Start out with the clean setting. <coughs> Right here it's doing it's scooping out the mids a little bit so that's a little bit different than the Eddie Kramer one that seemed to emphasize the mids um, I'll show you the what the equalizers sound like here first maybe I'll take each of these out so you can we can just focus on the equalizer and how it sounds at the beginning <laughs> You can control kind of like that that input section with this uh, main part, so that one runs parallel next to the edge. So that's like I said, you know, this is kind of the saturated sound. I actually don't even like it that much next to warm. It's really meant to be blended in side by side with the main one, so I'll bring it up. Different sort of equal uh, EQ curve in the lows. Bring up the lows, bring up warm is different. This is the sustain. And the doubler, that's kind of like the stereo kind of effect widens it out a little bit. Like a two guitars are playing the same thing. Next is the reverb. You know, again, a lot of these are supposed to be in context with the mix. This one didn't give it out to hear it though. 
presence. Next rock. Again, this edge is a lot more dramatic in this one. I don't even like it, so I'm going to turn it off. Jug setting. You know, it's tough to know really what's going on behind the scenes. You know, what's the difference between clean? What's the difference between chug? You know, is it just that the presets change here or anything like that? Or is there more going on? Uh, I don't know. Uh, just when I was mixing it, I sort of liked what The Rock was doing. So I'm going to go back to this one, play around with it until I get the settings how I liked. All right, now sort of do the same thing with the Les Paul. Last, I want to show you the Tony Maserati plugin. Uh, this one, you know, has a fewer number of controls here, but you also have a bunch of different options here for different guitar sounds from clean. Now you have your effects over here, chorus, heavy, um, flange, stuff like that. He has a lot more uh, effects options down here. So you have your basic... Um, like uh, EQ compressor thing with the sensitivity and the output up here, but then you uh, what he gives you is more control over the effects. So that's like your um, uh, you'll you'll hear it. Um, it's kind of like a mix between delay, maybe some modulation going on, maybe some reverb. You'll hear it, uh, and I'll play it back. Let me start out with the uh, clean one though, but it doesn't have any effects. Leslie speaker, the vibrato. No, that's not really appropriate for my guitar sound, but 
It's not to say it couldn't be used for uh, you know, some other song. Last ball again. That's what I wanted to show you, uh, just for the mix, uh, how you would use the different controls and things like that in the plugin. Uh, let me show you them back to back now, so you can make a judgment. I've kind of set them all up how I would uh, kind of optimize each one of the plugins, I think, or maximized how I would like to use that plugin with this guitar sound. Uh, so let me go through each of them, and you can sort of hear the difference. Uh, start out with the CLA guitars. I've warmed them up a little bit, uh, gave them a little bit more bite too. Uh, so that's what I hear going on there. Uh, let me play it back and I'll then move on to Eddie Kramer. <laughs> Next is the uh, JJP.
So that's hopefully you got an idea when I was playing them back side by side to hear how they are different. You know, the Tony Maserati has got a lot of mid range. The JJP has kind of scooped the mid range, and they're each a little bit different. Um, things like that. What I'm going to do now is uh, rather than solo them, I'm going to play them back in the context of the mix and sort of go through them and uh, bypass them, put them back in, so you can hear how these sound. You know, in the context of a full mix. You know, listening back to it, they each add a little bit something different. Um, some of them emphasized the bass things more. Some of them emphasized the the, the treble uh, frequencies more. I think uh, that I actually ended up liking the Kramer one the best. Uh, but you know, everybody's different. Their preferences are gonna you know what one person likes, what the other person likes. It all depends on the mix too, things like that. Uh, but I ended up liking the Kramer the best. The last thing that I wanted to show you though. Um, which is not a guitar specific plugin, um, is that the Tony Maserati bundle uh, comes with a group processor. Uh, and this group processor, uh, there's not one that's in any of the other uh, uh, plugins at, uh, at this point, or the plugin bundle. So the CLA, uh, the Kramer, and the JJP, they don't come with this kind of processor in it. But what it is, is kind of like a bus processor. Um, and it has some things, you know, if you're bus, you're, you're bussing out your drums or your, uh, guitars or strings or background vocals to all to a single channel. Uh, so this one's going to be my guitar bus, GTR bus. Cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to route these tracks together, um, by shift option, uh, going through the bus. Let me send it out to... Bus 1920, make this one bus 1920 here. Now what's going to happen is when I play it back, my uh, channels are going to go through here. What I'm going to do is select the guitar uh, preset. What this is uh, going to do is Tony Maserati has some kind of signal chain that it likes to use for the guitar's bus. Uh, and so I've got my rhythm guitars going to the seam bus channel. And uh, again, you control the sensitivity on here. You control the output. Then you kind of have another EQ setting, low, mids, and highs, and compression on it. 
Um, you know, this is a kind of processor you could have just, uh, I could have just used it on my uh, individual channel too and just set it on guitars. So it's up to you to decide how you want to use it, if you want to use it as a bus or on individual channels. Um, I'll play around with it and so you can hear how uh, the bus processing, what that's doing to the plugin um, as well. So this is the groups plugin again from the Tony Maserati bundle. Uh, you know, that's one thing that I really like about the Maserati bundle is, is it has some more unique ones that aren't that uh, don't really uh, show up in the other signature series bundle. So it has a groups one. It also has acoustic guitar specific plugin that none of the other ones really have. Um, and so you know, if you're looking at the different bundles and you think you know what, having that kind of groups processor will be uh, a good thing to have. Check out the Maserati one because none of the other ones have it. Um, so that's all I really want to show you in this video. Uh, let me play out my song again uh, and I'll, I'll let you hear it. And uh, thanks for checking out the video uh, and uh, catch you guys next time. I'm going to turn off the group processor just so uh, 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 you can hear it again with the Eddie Kramer. Here we go.